I remember it was in March, 1945. Nineteen stories from the top of San Francisco's Knob Hill. I could see everything from there. The sun shining on the bay, the bridge of the Golden Gate, the rich city sitting on its seven hills. It looked to me like a soft touch. <laughs> Somehow it made me think of a certain tough character in history's oldest book. A character called Satan who said, bow down and worship me and all this will be yours. And I believed every word of it. <laughs> I couldn't have found a better place to match my mood on that bright day. For I was in a famous spot called the Top of the Mark. Right up on top of the world. My world. I thought it was. I'm telling you about real people. So I use no real names. Least of all my own. For the purposes of this story, I will be known as Molly X. Great view, isn't it? Oh, you're cute. Get lost. Get lost. Kansas City cash. Not a loose buck in town. You're looking swell, Molly. Well, it's the climate. You should always wear black, baby. Yeah, grief becomes her, doesn't it? Well, surprise. When you sent for the boys, you didn't mention me. But I came anyway. I knew it would make you happy. I'm all choked up. Bourbon, plain water. Same? Same, no water. What's the news from Kansas City, Cash? Anybody get a line on who killed Rick? You mean, uh... You don't know who murdered your husband? Shut up, man. <laughs> well, after all, the wife very often knows. The coppers are stymied. They haven't found a clue, Molly. The coppers. Couldn't find a pair of pajamas and a bowl of soup. Swell view from up here. Mm-hmm. From that window over there, you can see the Bay Bridge to Oakland. Over there is Alcatraz. No kidding. I always wanted to get a look at Alcatraz. Stick around Molly and you'll get a good look. Look, honey, that's San Francisco Bay out there. The water's deep and it's cold. And sometimes they don't come up. We're here to talk business. It's private. That means you and Drift. What? Say, listen. You heard me. Go powder your nose. Why did you bring her? She made such a squawk I had to. Buy her a present and send her back. Okay, Molly. What's the pitch? I've been here about three months now, putting on the dog in a lush apartment. Wealthy young widow from the East. You look it. I've cased a couple of setups that should be a cinch. So you're organizing your own mob now? A small, compact group could handle the jobs I have in mind. With two more good boys, we could clean up. Yeah. Uh-huh. Only remember, I'm running this show. You can count me in, baby. Cash? Oh, I don't know, Molly. I never took orders from a dame. Oh, Cash, you were Rick's best friend. I need you. I know I can depend on you. Come on, Cash. I feel lucky about this. I never depend on just luck. Now, here's the setup.
so close they'll get wise. Get set. We're getting close to the spot. says Bandit's got 50,000. Yeah, with only 32 grand in the bag. 50 looks better in print. A strategic attack plan by a mastermind. That's you, Molly. Uh-huh, a dame. But you wouldn't take orders from. I didn't say I wouldn't. I said I never did. You're a smart little number. Thanks. Don't get too smart. Hi, kid. Hi there, Max. Yeah. This looks like old times. Don't tell me I crashed a party. Hey, I put you on a plane two weeks ago. So I'm back. Next time I'll ship you in a trunk. What are we celebrating? Or do I have to guess? We're celebrating your return, plum cake. Hold your chin up. I'll give you a nice big kiss. Cut it, Rod. Well, she's got it coming to her. Never mind. That's love, Cash. He always gets rough when I come back to him. Don't you, your big heel. Living here now? You know I'm not. I know why you sent for Rod. The whole thing was cooked up between you before you left Kansas City. You thought he'd ditch me and leave me there. He tried to, but he didn't get away with it, because I know too much about him, see? Uh-huh. You think you're going to hold him that way? I'll hold him. You can't get rid of me. Nobody's gonna find me in an alley like they found your husband. Don't you ever make that crack again. Don't waste my time, you stupid little... We're going to write that off because you don't know what you're doing. But get this through your thick skull. I don't want Rod. I'm nobody's girl. I'm on my own. That's not what he thinks. I sent for him because he's one of the best operators in his line, and that's all. You made him send me home. Sure I did, to keep you out of trouble. You expect me to believe that? No. You're one of those people that have to find things out the hard way. All right, you stick around and take your beating. But keep out of my way. Because if I have to slap you down, you'll stay down. It's a good thing we set the date back. With these headlines on the street, tonight this town will really go nuts. Yeah, about the time we're ready for this job, all the crowds will be down on Market Street.
shut up. you. Are you kidding? Somebody turn me in. Oh, you're crazy. Max and Frank, you're on the way out of town. You know, cash wouldn't sink. That leaves Anne. Anne wouldn't do a thing like that. Anne would cut my heart out and sell it by the pound. I should have shipped the two of you back to Kansas City the minute she showed up at the mark. I know. But I was stuck with the dame. And when I got word you wanted me here, I would have come if I had to crawl. I've always been crazy for you, baby. I'm still not interested, Rod. You'd better be. Because you're in a tough spot, and I'm the only one who can get you out of it. Oh? Cash and I have got a car planted in the garage in the back of this building. Okay, let's use it. On one condition. That it's you and me from now on. How about your girlfriend, Anne? Forget about Anne. Let her mess up some other guy's life. First time I saw you, I said to myself, that's for me. And someday I'm going to move in. Rick was in the way, but I knew I could take care of him. Remember the time he was drunk and he hit you? That's when I made up my mind he had to go. Oh? You made up your mind. What do you think I was doing? You don't think I enjoyed being shoved around like that, do you? If somebody else hadn't dropped him in an alley, I might have done it myself. Because by that time, Rod, I was pretty crazy about you. I never meant to tell you. You said you were out of town the night Rick was killed. Were you? You wouldn't take a chance like that. Just because you wanted me. I fixed him for you, baby. I fixed him good. <laughs> You're gonna hold it against me? Oh, you're cute. You're rough, too. Frankie got away. Rod's upstairs. Well, come on, I want to talk to him. That'll be a neat trick. He's dead. He killed Rick. I got it out of him. He bragged about it, Cash. So he was the guy, huh? Sure. Sure, it all fits in. He was clearing the road so he'd get to you. That's what he thought. But I gave him the same medicine. We can't leave him up there. 
or something. Get the car, wait for me. You sure you're all right? Why shouldn't I be? Yeah. Executor will recommend that you receive a minimum sentence. I can't tell you. I don't know. You wouldn't lie to me, would you? I would if I could. We'll find him, Molly. Sooner or later, we'll bring him back. She doped him out. Isn't it rather unusual for a woman to act in such a capacity? It used to be. It ain't anymore. First thing you know, the dames will take over the whole racket. <laughs> you phoned the cops. Told them who I was and where they could find me. That's your guess. To get me, you put the skids under all of us. You can thank yourself for what happened to... I know what happened to Rod. 
You killed him. You're crazy. Why should I? I'll find out. You can't get away from it, Molly. They're gonna put you on ice. Right where I can lay my hands on you. You are sentenced to be confined in the California Institution for Women at the Hatchaby for a period prescribed by law. Number 17. So you found nothing in that apartment? Nothing. Neither did we. You say Rod Markle had a yen for Molly? What about Cash Brady? It was Rod she wanted. Why should she rub him out? Her husband was murdered in Kansas City. Yes, that came out at the trial. I believe that she and Rod were in that together. She was afraid the San Francisco police might get it out of him, so she killed him. What you believe will never get us a conviction. Juries demand proof. I'll show you the kind I mean. This is the bullet that was dug out of Markle's body. It's a 38. Under a microscope, you'd see that this slug is indelibly marked by the rifling of the gun barrel from which it was fired. If we can find that gun and tie it up to its owner, we've got a pretty good idea who got Marco. I told you Molly's gun was a 38. Okay, but where is it? If I could work on Molly, I'd find out. <laughs> going back this afternoon. What do you think? I figured you would. Christmas Eve's a good night to be home. Sunny California.
Miss Horton. Oh, hello, Miss Prentice. How are you, Mr. Lang? Fine, thank you. This is Molly. Hello. We want to catch the afternoon train back to town, so if you'll just sign for Molly, we'll be on our way. All right. I'll do that. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Goodbye. Good luck, and... Don't say Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right, I won't. Money, stamps, and articles of value are held here until the time of your release. That includes your coat also. You'll be given an itemized receipt for all these things. You may keep your compact and lipstick. Makeup's permitted here. Here, you can put these in the vault, too. Now, would you sign this, please? It authorizes the institution to open your mail. Inquisitive, aren't they? Do they answer it, too? Here are the rules of the institution. Read them carefully. Molly, this is Mrs. Corrigan, the hospital supervisor. Come with me, Molly. Just a moment. I'll have to take those earrings also. Wear them with green, honey. They did wonders for me. Why was I brought up here? Every newly admitted girl spends her first two weeks in the hospital in quarantine. You'll occupy this room. Hello. I'm Miss Gregory. I'll take care of you. I'm not sick. All right. Take your clothes off. What for? bath and body examination. I don't need an examination and I don't need a bath. Don't you want to be clean for Christmas? Why? Does the cleanest girl get to see Santa Claus? Take them off. All right, give it the work. You don't have to sit there and watch me. I've been doing this job for years. Aren't you kind of finicky for a girl who thinks she's so tough? Yes, I am. Yes, you are. <laughs> That's all, Molly. I'll call you when the dentist is ready for you. Minister, doctor, dentist. What are you trying to do, make me over? <laughs> Only you can do that. Ah, oh, don't think I'm so, honey. You'll get used to it here just like I did. This is my third trip, but I'm not squawking. In 30 days, you can have visitors and your folks. And your husband will come to see you. No, he won't. He can't come. Why not? I shot him. He's dead. <laughs> well, you're sure a healthy specimen. If I tried to tell you, say, have you got a cigarette? Yes, here. You can keep those. Thanks a lot. What do I do with this? Oh, you roll your own here. Tailor-maids aren't permitted. They are? Why? Why not? Fire hazard. They don't go out when you lay them down. That kind does. Be seeing you.
The purpose of these meetings for newly admitted girls is to tell you about the institution and what it may mean to you. Your behavior, your effort to improve and understand yourself will determine how you get along here and whether when you leave it will be for good. You've been here nearly two weeks now. I want to know each of you and talk over your problems with you. This meeting is as much yours as mine, so ask me anything you like. Miss Calvin. Yes, Amy. It's good to be back in the old joint. I mean the old institution again. Can I take up my studies where I left Wolf? Of course. You see, every new girl is privileged to enroll for part-time studies during her stay here. I was in second year high when they turned me loose the last time. When do we find out how much time we got to do? Under the penal laws of this state, every convicted person is given an indeterminate sentence. After your first six months here, you will be called before our board of trustees and they will determine the time you must serve. Who's on the board, men? One man. And four women. I'm a dead duck. The six months period gives our staff time to study your case as a physician studies his patient's case history and prepare a summary of each girl's case for the board. The law sends you here as a punishment. Our job is to try, with your help, to enable you to get along in society after you leave. Look into your hearts and face what you find there. You can never hide from it. Never escape it. Any other questions? Feels good to get out of quarantine, doesn't it? It sure does. So this is the college campus. Yeah, this is where we live and learn. Which cottage have I been assigned to? Davis. Last one on the left. I'm on the house council at Davis. Sort of a trustee. No, they don't use that system here. House councils help out with the new girls, like I'm doing with you. What are you in for, Vera? Forgery. Short story writer. Yeah. Only I didn't know how to write a happy ending. line of work that might interest you, Molly. What makes you think I'm interested in work? We all have to do something. These girls are being trained to become expert cutters and fitters in women's tailoring. They don't have to go back to the rackets. They're getting a chance to begin again. Oh, here's the fitter. You'll be issued four of these dresses, and you may choose your own patterns. No uniforms in this academy? Uniforms are considered bad for morale. Makeup is permitted here for the same reason. Women will be women. Even in the pokey. Okay. Stick them up. This is it, Molly. You can move right in. Anyway, I won't have to worry about the rent. You know Mrs. Barker, our house supervisor. Yes, we've met. You begin tomorrow in the sewing room, Molly. Up at 6.30, breakfast at 7, work starts at 8. Yes, ma'am. Outside of that, I won't have a thing to do. Where's my cell? We don't have any cells at CIW. We're modern. Here's a new fish, Jan. Swell. Reel her in. This is Molly, your new roommate. You'll have time to clean up before supper. Be good now. I guess I draw the top bunk, huh? You're a good guesser. Here's your hook. Thanks. This is mine. Now I know how it feels to be a sardine. Was it you who decorated this homey little rat's nest? A few bright colors help. What's most important is a girl's state of mind. <laughs> I'll keep my own state of mind. Well, the brainy type. These are yours, of course. Must I be a moron to be into Hatchaby? I've got one, too. What was your racket? I was a thief. Same as you. I read about your case in the papers. Molly, the blue-eyed bandit. Oh, they worked that gag to death. 
Leader of your own little mob specializing in payrolls and jewelry stores. <laughs> what a sap. No more of a sap than you. That's how I know. I see myself as I was when I came here. A gal who thought she was something special. The world her oyster. No matter how tough the rap, she's sure she can beat it because she's smarter than the next guy. What is this, part of the treatment? Did they put me in here with you on purpose? I'm just a volunteer. You're too big-hearted. When I want a character reading, I'll ask for it. Aren't you feeling well, Molly? I never felt better in my life. Then why aren't you up and dressed? It's time for breakfast. Fine. Send in a menu. I'll have mine in bed. You were told to report to the sewing room this morning at 8 o'clock. Look, I'm a career woman, but I didn't come here to learn a new trade. If the taxpayers want to keep me, that's their grief. Judge didn't say anything about going to work. Everybody works in this institution. Sure. Sure they do. I saw them. Ninety or more of them. Stitching corduroy pants and denim shirts for cons at Folsom and San Quentin. You think I'm going to sit at one of those machines seven hours a day doing the same thing over and over again till I haven't got a thought left in my brain? You're nuts! Let them work, the dumb clucks. I won't and you can't make me. Come on, put me in solitary. There's nobody around here I want to talk to anyway. You can't change me. You're never going to change me. I advise a cooling off period. Keep her locked in her room and deprive her of all privileges, except the right to go to the table for her meals. Mm -hmm. Mercifully accept our thanks and bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which are about to receive from thy bounty through our blessed Savior. Amen. <laughs> Judy. I guess you've heard about me. They had my picture in the Sunday paper. Oldest woman I is. Stop kicking me, will ya? Hey, save a piece of that chicken for Buffy. Buffy? Who's she? She's a he. Well, let me bring him to the table. because you won't work. I like a girl who's got spirit. And a spitfire all my life. Good girl. Where'd you get Buffy? Was born here. Gotta have something to love. Some has got cats, some canaries. One girl's got a chipmunk. She's old, she don't know no better. How long have you been here, Judy? They brought me down from the woman's section in San Quentin when they opened up this place in 33. I'm a charter member. You got a life? Yep. The feller I killed had it coming. That made no difference to the jury. I nearly got the rope. It's the way they done it then. But they commuted me. There's a condemned woman in here now waiting to go to San Quentin. I know. Poor thing. Everybody's hoping she'll get a commutation. I ain't so sure about that. Murder's a 
tough rap to beat. Yeah. but there's no sign of a change. I believe the underlying reason for her behavior is a suppressed fear. Fear of what? I don't know. The psychiatrist refers to something like that. Here in his report on Molly, Dr. Connor says the subject gives the impression that there's something about her case which she's hiding. Well, call her in. I'll talk to her. Any other problems? No, I'm sure we've covered everything. <laughs> Molly, no girl goes on fighting the world just for the kick she gets out of it. There's always a reason. In your case, it could be something that happened in your early life. I never got over being born. Look, Miss Calvert, I appreciate the invitation. But I have nothing to confide. All right, Molly. Perhaps you need to think it over a little longer. In any event, take my advice. Do your time. Don't let it do you. when it's murder. Well, that's where it started with me. My dad was swell. And six weeks after he died, my mother was married again. To a no good nothing of a guy. Six weeks. <laughs> I was a scrawny brat, all eyes. But a few years changed all that, and when I'm 16, I find out I'm a woman. So does my stepfather. It was cat and mouse from then on. Fighting him, dodging him, and hating him. Nobody I could tell. He was smart, he was slick, and do you think she was wise? First thing I know, she hates me. Blames the whole thing on me and sends me away. I should have killed that guy I wish I had. He had it coming to him just like... Just like who? Just like nobody. I'm sorry there's been delay in sending you further information, but we've been so short of staff that... a la hora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén. Dios te salve, María, quien no. Y goes a ten.
humbly commend the soul of this thy servant, our dear sister, into thy hands. I'm done. And I don't want any more of your impudence. Well, if you just... Not another word. Put that out. Don't throw that out. I'd probably miss her anyway. You've got a devil in you. you better get rid of him before he drives you nuts. Okay, skinny. Dawn's my name. I used to be just like you, but I'm finding out. How'd you come to land in here? Men. Little men. Always coming round. Funny how a big woman goes for little men. And when I go, I go. Had to kill one of them to scare the others away. Look, you give me this blesses heart. Who, the one you killed? What got you into trouble? A man I married. He's dead. Give me, I'll hang it up for you. Thanks. Don't you go shoving me around. Who's shoving? How do I know you're going to back your big trailer into the alley? Oh, you fresh fish. I ought to hang one on you. Where do you want your ashes shipped? Oh, 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 oh. What are you trying to do? She got caught in the mangle. I was only trying to pull her out. Honest, Mrs. Mac, she saved my life. I could have been flattened like a sheet. You don't have to lie for her, Amy. Get back to work. Haven't you given me enough trouble without starting a fight? Keep on getting bad reports, it will stand against you when the board considers your case. Ah! <laughs> 
Hi. Hey, wait a minute. What are you kids gonna do, sing harmony? No, we gotta rehearse the commencement day exercises. Didn't you know we graduated high school? No kidding. Sure, I got a D average. Mm, she's the camel that snuck through the needle's eye. Yeah, March here topped all the honors. Congratulations. They voted her the student most likely not to come back. Well, come on, you guys, we'll be late. I'm sorry, Dawn. I didn't make chapel this morning. I just wasn't up to it. That's what you say every Sunday. How can you get saved if you don't stand up and be counted? I don't want to get counted. What do you want me to do? Put on an act? Act like a phony? Uh-oh. Here comes a load of new fish. Say, we're getting a much higher class of gals in this institution. You fool, them ain't new gals. This the board of trustees. Hello, Dawn. How are you? Fine. Fine. So those are the people who decide my fate tomorrow. Mine too, woman. This will be my second time before the board. I wonder what we're gonna get. Hello, Dawn. Howdy, Miss Hunter. Ladies and Mr. Everett. Sit down, Dawn. Thank you, ma'am. You were convicted on a charge that makes a term of from six months to ten years mandatory. The charge of manslaughter. Is that understood? Yes, ma'am. I slaughtered him. At the time of your trial, you pleaded self-defense. Yes, ma'am. You claimed that this man attacked you. Yes, ma'am. He threw a stove at me. It was just a little bit of a stove, and I wouldn't have minded that, but it had a fire in it. It was then that you reached for the hammer? Did you mean to kill him? No, sir. Just to put a dent in him. I don't know my own strength. Very well, Dawn. We'll call you back when we've decided your case. Thank you, ma'am. You understand me. I know I done wrong, and I'm not looking for no mercy. I'm not looking for no justice, neither. I couldn't take that. <laughs> we'll have Molly in next. The uh, psychologist gives Molly a high IQ, doesn't he? Yes. She's hardly a psychopathic case. But we have practically no social history on her. Well, she won't talk about her family. There's some mystery about this girl. Sit down, Molly. Molly, you were convicted of grand theft, for which the law gives you one to ten years. Your first three months here were rather stormy ones. How do you account for that? Why, I hated everybody, and I thought that everybody hated me. Do you think so now? I guess I had to come to Tehachapi to find out about people. You know, your early bad reports are balanced by the unselfishness and courage you showed at the time of the accident in the laundry. That wasn't me, that was somebody else. But that somebody was there all the time, Molly. You just wouldn't let her live. Now that you've found her, try not to lose her again. Won't you tell us where we can get in touch with your family? No. I'm sorry, I didn't. We know you were married in Kansas City and your husband was killed. What about his family? For all I know, he never had one. All right, Molly, you may go. postponement. That means we will review your case two years from now. And if you're entitled to parole, you'll do a total of three years here. Less good time credits and four years outside. Molly's on her way here now, Captain. She was promoted recently. Promoted? From the laundry to the cutting room. Oh. She's been difficult, but we have hopes that she'll respond to treatment. <laughs> treatment? You don't believe in the new penal system, do you? Tell me, what are you running here? A prison or a country club? There was a time in this state when criminals were sent away to be punished, not to be pampered. Our girls are not pampered. They're simply given another chance to become useful citizens. You know, 
From what I've seen of this place, the gals of the outside are liable to start a crime wave in order to get in here. There is no substitute for freedom. Does the hospital treat dangerous diseases by locking up the individual and then turning him loose to do more damage? Our duty to the people of this state is to take the evil they send us and try to turn it into good. We have our failures. But if our critics would take the trouble to dig up the truth, they'd find that a very small percentage of the women committed here ever come back again. Pardon me. Yes? Send her in. Molly's here now. I'll leave her alone with you. Molly, here's an old friend of yours from San Francisco. Call me when you've finished, Captain. Sit down, Molly. I was over to San Quentin talking to Cash Brady about your dead husband. Rick must have been an exciting guy to live with. A lot older than you, wasn't he? I understand Cash was his best friend. That's right. What did you and Cash do with your guns the night you were arrested in San Francisco? I never had a gun. Well, Cash had one. 38. Rod Marco was killed with a 38. Was he? Came out of the trial that Max Hayden and Frankie Morgan were the last ones who saw Markle that night. You think they killed him? They had no reason to. Well, who had a reason? Nobody that I know of. Wasn't Cash kind of crazy about you? Of course not. Well, I know Markle was. I believe you and Cash were the last ones who saw him. Markle wanted you to go away with him. You might have done so. Cash turned up in time to stop it. Cash killed him, didn't he? No. Well, you've given them all a clean bill of health, Molly. Kind of puts you in the spot. Don't you think you better tell the truth and save your own skin? I tell you, I don't know who killed him. I don't know. Thanks. You've been a great help. Please, can I go now? Sure. You know how Nipper looks with one ear up and one ear hanging over the eye. And so he sees Buffy, the cat. Oh. <laughs> Buffy's been very elegant lying there like Cleopatra. <laughs> Neither of them know that in the tree directly above them and watching everything is a baby bird. He's looking over the corner of his nest. You know what a baby bird looks like. <laughs> Good to see you again. Didn't you know I was in quarantine? No, naturally. I was committed under my own name. I haven't used it in a long time. Jenny, this is Anne. Hi. Molly and I were great pals in Kansas City. I knew her husband, Rick. And she knew my boyfriend, Rod Markle. Rod was killed, murdered. Maybe you read about it in the papers. Yeah. Happened in San Francisco, didn't it? Who killed him? We don't know. Yet. We'll find out. Won't we, Molly? Sure. <laughs> Jenny, you'll excuse us, won't you? We have so much to talk about. So much to talk about. 
What are you in here for? Forgery. One count. I could have had probation, but I talked my way out of it. Nothing could keep me away from you. Listen, I've had plenty of trouble here, but that's all changed now. And I'm getting out in seven months. That's what you think. But you start something, sister, and so help me, I'll beat your brains out if I rot here the rest of my life. No appetite? Quit picking on her, will you? Yeah. You've been needling Molly ever since you were assigned to this cottage. Who voted you in here, anyway? I asked for it. Being near my old friend helps me to adjust myself to institutional life. Well, it's not doing your old friend any good. <laughs> By the way, Molly, where do you think I was living before I came here? In the apartment house where you and Cash were arrested. The police is still interested in that place. Every now and then a copper snooping around. They're liable to find most anything in a joint like that. Molly! It may interest you to know that I saw the slug they took out of Rod. A 38. Max Hayden told me that you had a 38. That Cash gave it to you. Nobody can pin that rap on me. Don't kid yourself. The only way you'll ever get out of this place is on a one-way ticket to the San Quentin gas chamber. Cutting your own going away outfit. One of those little numbers provided by the institution. Choose black, Molly. It'll be fitting for the occasion. I think I figured out what became of that gun of yours. I couldn't find it in apartment 17. I'll lay you money, it's buried somewhere downstairs. on to Captain Breen. You can't bury murder, Molly. No grave is deep enough. I dare say most of you know me by now, but for those who don't, I'm Mrs. Ellie Mason of the Los Angeles Parole Office. She's a swell guy. Thank you, Amy. A number of you girls who will come before the board next month will be paroled to our division. This will be the third time Mrs. Mason's had me on her hand. And the last, I hope. Parole does not mean the end of your sentence, and a violation of any of its conditions may send you back to do your full time. The staff of the parole office is there to help you in every way they can, and they want you to make good. They get jobs for you, and a decent place to live. You tell them, Amy. Why not? You have everything thought out for you here, but when you turn loose, you're on your own again. And that's not as soft as it sounds. Some kids, after they've been shut up for a couple of years, are scared of everything. The traffic... The men. What were you scared of, Amy? The traffic. <laughs> you know it's getting so you can't keep a thing in this place. I had my fountain pen swiped out of my room this morning. My locket with my husband's picture in it. It's gone. How about that? Did you report it? No, I don't want to call copper. But you've got it. We can't let this go on. Did you hear that? This thing is getting serious. I told you somebody caught my new lipstick. Have you girls lost anything? What have I got that anybody in want? Hmm. My treasures are still intact. My charm bracelet's gone. Somebody's practicing for a broken back. Molly? I've lost nothing. I'm short a bottle of cologne. Girls, we gotta face it. Sure as shooting, there's a thief in the joint. <laughs> Whose laundry is this? Mine. 
I found these things hidden under... Uh-huh. Why'd you come to this room? I've been making an unofficial check of all the rooms. Molly, how could you risk so much for a lot of junk that means nothing to anybody except those who lost it? Hey, Molly didn't steal that stuff. I wish I could believe that. Oh, Vera, don't be a chump. You'll get in trouble yourself if the staff finds out you've been searching the rooms. Look, you stay out of it. If I can't produce the thief myself, I'll go to Mrs. Barker. I'll tell her I found those things. That ought to be good enough. Okay, find the thief or take the wrap yourself. How do you like that? to you, Anne. Mrs. Barger, we told Anne not to climb that tree. Yeah, when she fell, she hit every limb on the way down. If Molly, if Molly hadn't a quarter, she might have broke her neck. And that would have been terrible. Uh -oh. And so, Captain Breen, this will be my final report on Molly and Anne. Molly is leaving today for Los Angeles. Though I feel she has not told us the entire truth about her case, I'm glad no evidence has been discovered which corroborates Anne's suspicions. In view of her good work and conduct record during the final years of her sentence, she's considered a fair parole risk. Sincerely yours. Where will 
early. I found a one-room apartment just a short bus ride from the factory. It's tiny, but it's reasonable and it's clean. I don't care what it is, as long as the key turns on my side of the door. Do these people know I'm a parolee? Mr. Renbow, the manager, does, but he'll never mention it. Molly, I suppose you've read the conditions of your parole. Oh, I know them by heart. Don't try to leave town. Not even for one day. You mean that's what I'm expected to do? Good morning, Mrs. Mason. Good morning. Just a moment, please. Mrs. Mason's here, Mr. Renbow. Send her in, please. Go right in, please. Thank you. Molly, this is Chris Renbow, your new boss. Well, of course. Hello, Molly. Hello. Well, that's a smart-looking outfit you're wearing. Thank you. She designed and cut it herself. Take the coat off, Molly. Let him see the dress. Yes, sir. I think the buyers would go for a dress like that. I know I would. We make budget dresses. So if you get any ideas, that door is always open. Bring them right in. I think you'll like it here. So do I. And anything I can do, <laughs> well, you know. Come on, I'll show you girls around the plant. Did you send for me? Yes. Molly, we're well satisfied with your work here. I'm afraid I've got to take you off that cutting room job. I like these drawings you left on my desk, particularly this model. Where'd you learn to do this sort of thing? To hatch a bee. I might use a number like this for a new spring line. You've got a new job. I thought I was fired. Not a chance in the world. Steady sort of guy, saved my money, got a nice house all paid for. Do you think if we got permission from the parole board, you could see Chris, the way? There's something you don't know. There's nothing I want to know. Your debt's paid. Not in full. Okay. You may change your mind. I'll be standing by no matter how long it takes. Oh, Chris. Thank you, and, and I mean that from my heart. Good night. Good night. Now that you're in the clear, you won't have to say good night to him at the door. What are you talking about? You mean to tell me you don't know that Captain Breen has arrested Cash Brady for the murder of Rod? I don't believe it. Why do you think I went to all this trouble to look you up? Why I don't believe it? Why should you? Well, I just thought you'd know. I wanted to see how you were taking it. Look at this. San Francisco. Cash Brady, convicted bandit, was taken into custody today and lodged in the county jail in San Francisco. Police allege they have found the gun with which he ended the life of a crime partner in a 1945 gang killing in this city. Here, keep it. Frame it. That you're out. There's just one thing I'd love to know. Whose gun was it they found? Cash Brady's? Or yours? Captain 
Captain Breen? This is Anne. Molly's just leaving on a 12-1 plane. That's right. Good hunting. for Captain Breen. Did you expect to find him here at this hour? I didn't know. May I wait for him, please? Sort of out of bounds, aren't you, Molly? Captain Breen, you found the wrong gun. This is the gun that killed Rod Markle. And it belongs to me, not, not to Cash Brady. Oh, I see. Then, on the night of the Latham robbery, I was alone with Rod Markle in the apartment he occupied with Cash Brady. Rod had told me he could get me safely out of town. He admitted he had killed my husband. So I shot him. Cash helped me with the body, but he had nothing else to do with it. I've carried this in my heart for three years now. Thank God I'm rid of it at last. That up and bring it right back here. Hello, Molly. Cash. Molly has confessed she shot Rod Markle. Is that right, baby? You know that's true. You haven't got it quite straight, kid. That the slug they dug out of Margo was fired from my gun, not from yours. I killed him, Cash. You know it. You're lying. You're trying to get me off, and I won't let you do it. Now, wait a minute. I like you, yes, but not that good. You see, Rod was wearing a shoulder holster. Your slug hit the buckle on the strap across his chest. It knocked him cold, but that was all. When I got there, I saw what had happened, and I finished the job was my friend. I paid his score. Why didn't you tell me? Why should I? You seem glad of what you've done. A couple of weeks ago, we found Cash's gun in the courtyard of the house where he did the job. It was six feet down a drain. That's a straight up to Molly. They've got me dead to rights. Cash. <laughs> I've never seen you cry before. Changed, haven't you, kid? Yeah. You know, I could be wrong about this new penal system. 